So geolinguistics uh, communities in the Celto uh, Atlantic area in Western Europe, this study derives from several uh, reflections based on the research carried out by the geolinguists of the major European multilingual atlas, the Atlas Linguarum Europae, or ILA if you prefer. The sources used for these studies are data collected in the field from dialect native speakers, mainly in the course of the 20th century. Geolinguistic raw materials um, uh, is based on rural or maritime speeches with social uh, use has declined in many sectors of the European continent in parallel with the development of the market economy. Fortunately, these local dialects have been collected and studied from the beginning of the 20th century to all days. The recorded data have been gathered in the numerous linguistic atlases, which are now open to a vast domain of interpretations, thanks to the new electronic mapping tools, while taking into account also the recent research carried out in the fields of archaeology, prehistory, and ethnology, and of course, paleoanthropology and genetics. Um, yes. Um, Rural speeches are peripheral, and unlike what happens in urban areas, they seem immutable while the social and economic changes occurring in their society are slow. In fact, the main observable change is the radical shift from the local dialect to the national official language. The conservatives of the dialects is explained by the huge social gap between the educated classes and the dialect speakers who have often remained illiterate and isolated from urban centers. As regards linguistic change, it's just the opposite of the traditional view, which, according to the tree model, places the origin of the dialects between the disappearance of the languages of antiquity, considered as fossils, and the birth of modern languages in the Middle Ages. Local speech or uh, local dialects are not living natural organisms in constant evolution. On the opposite, they are conservative and evolve very slowly under pressure of geographical and ethnic contact and social uh, sociocultural transformations. Uh, within the framework of this continental atlas, the ILA, the priority objective of geolinguistics becomes the search for profound affinities across borders and linguistics and cultural areas, rather than, than that of divergences. Some researches, notably those of Mario Alenei, confirmed by Marcel, Marcel Ott, have for 30 years seriously called into question the invasive theory of Indo-Europeans. They remarked it, the incompatibility of the Indo-European models chronology with the new findings in geolinguistics, in, yeah, in the geolinguistic or archaeology. They also deplored the fact that there was no archaeological evidence of the Indo-European invasion, which was supposed to be the very uh, to be very important for the fourth millennium BC. Jean-Paul de Moule had also uh, the same position since the end of the 20th century. Uh, Alenius' research based on geolinguistics, archaeology and anthropology mm -hmm. proposed the parading of Paleolithic continuity, PCP. This model demonstrates on the basis of concordances between dialectal and archaeological area, areas that the lexicon of the present-day European dialects retain part of the features of prehistory and thus attest the unbroken presence in Europe of Indo-European and non-Indo-European languages and populations since the Upper, Paleotic, the Upper Paleolithic. According to the PCP, the Celts will have settled in uh, the, the Atlantic coast from the Iberian Peninsula to America and Scotland since the Mesolithic. The purpose of the present study is not to privilege the Celtic area, but to use this geolinguistic reality 
as a way of questioning the notion of languages and populations continuity in the Atlantic area of Europe, as we already uh, did with some of us by pu publishing the book uh, Air Linguistique, Air Culturel, as you can see here on the slide. So let's see some examples now for, of uh, these concordances. The names for Ras. Here are the Celtic, uh, English, and Romance names of the Ras. Uh, so it is a very clear uh, demonstration here of linguistic uh, concordances uh, in the Atlantic area. On both sides of the channel, we can first remark the Celtic names Breton Guach. Welsh Gwach and in dialectal English of Cornwall Gwach, coming from also uh, of course from Cornish Gwach, which is not used anymore, and so the Celtic names explain the et etymology of some of their English and gallo equivalent equivalent in green uh, here on the map, uh, English Ras and the gallo romans forms Vrak Vra collected in Normandy and also in Eastern Brittany. Before being applied to a, a species of fish, the Celtic terms uh, Welsh Gwach or Breton Gwach colloquially mean hag or witch. In their comments on the names of the witch in Europe, Caprini and Aline in 2007 note that in Celtic, the colloquial term refers only to the semantic field, field of hag, as well as to which sorcerers, but in a derogatory sense. In Southern Europe, in particularly in Italy or in the Iberian Peninsula, we have Galician mega, or for example, Italian strega. Still, they still clear, clearly refer to the magic and the religious field. One also finds a reference to the mother goddess in the Slavic or Finnish dialects. Referring to Vladimir Prop, uh, Caprini and Aline explained the restriction of the Celtic semantic field by a consequence of the rich craft trials, trials carried out in an intense, intense and repeated manner in these regions of Western Re Europe from the 14th to the 17th centuries. And so in that context, uh, it is not difficult to understand that the magical aspect of the witch had been eliminated and disappeared. Uh, however, the magical religious trait seems to have survived in the Celtic names of the Ras. In fact, the seaside Celtic speakers used to believe that fish to have supernatural, supernatural abilities. Several Celtic tales uh, relate the prodigious action of the Ras, which appears to be endowed by, with a magical power that allows it to reign over the other marine animals of the rocky area where it lives. The Ras, the Ras is, also, is sometimes also called rockfish on the British coast, and in Scottish Gaelic, we are also Rikoch, uh, Rikoch which means rocky, from Gaelic kreak, rock. Uh, we also, um, it's also called old wife in Scotland, and in Irish, mahir namalach, uh, mother of the ras, or sea wife. The names of the ras reveal a motivational process indicating a totemic system of beliefs, also noticed by Francesco Benozzo in the Celtic names of the whale in 2012. That group of fish names present many, many similarities with Setna, uh, a goddess sea wife in the Inuit mythology. The Inuit's way of life used to, to be based on fishing and hunting up, up to the middle of the 20th century. This notion of uh, supernatural power providing game or fish is, found in, um, is founded on an animist co conception of the world which attributes to supernatural entities a form of subjectivity. They, then one can agree with the game spacey spirits to have 
the right to hunt. For the Inuit, Sedna does not remain for a long period in a natural, ca natural cave, but according to the Inuktitut, the word Sedna will have been derived from the term Sana, there under, offering another relevant semantic association with the Celtic names of the Rath. Another type of examples, the names, uh, yes, just to note that uh, uh, in this connection, uh, the, the Breton Groach is also often used in toponymy to designate um, megaliths, such as the most famous of them, uh, Minirach, a stone of the Hag. And this phenomenon is common to the Celtic area since the term old is commonly used to denote many years old or men. Um, so next, uh, another example of concordances in the Celto Atlantic area, names for nodes. Uh, in the Gaelic linguistic atlas of Scotland, throne is not the most frequent term used for nose. Uh, one find also throne and throne variants. The Gaelic area of throne correspond evidently to the southern Irish area of throne to all and then to the Welsh area of Froin and the Britain one of Hron in a thro thro alternation which is common in the concordances between Gaelic and gallo Britonic. Welsh Froin and Breton Fron both mean nostril. They then correspond to the gallo Romans dialect form Fronio, snout and probably coming from a Gaulish Fronia, Sronia. Uh, then let's also recall to the French Se Renfrogner, to, uh, to Fron, to Skull, and also uh, a Mine Renfrogner, a frowning face, and they are all, uh, they are of course derivatives from that Celtic, from that Celtic lexical group, and we can recall uh, as well, the English to throne. Let us mention the Occitan and Italo Roman trugno, used to take here more in the south, uh, used to designate an unhappy and defeated face, falla trugna, to pout, to look sulky, obviously connect of French throne, uh, familiar term for merg, grotesque also, pleasant face. Uh, um, in Scots Gaelic and in Scottish toponymy, Strone refers also to hill, headland, and cape. In fact, all these terms, throne, 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 etc., will be nothing else than the protected, protected diversification of the referent nose, nostril, and muzzle snout in Celtic languages. Uh, let's go now to the names for Alder. Here again, we notice that the Celtic Gaelic area Fjarna correspond to the Irish Fjorn and uh, to those of the Welsh and Britain equi equ equivalent Guern. In Gallo Romans, oil and oak areas, uh, the terms descended from the Gaulish word Werna. Werner uh, are still in use in a wide southern area. The Celtic lexical continuity is maintained in, in northwestern Italy and Catalonia by the respe respective Werner and Vern forms. Um, yes, and the similarity to the previous throne throne map is striking, including in this case a higher a density of Celtic variants in southern Gaul. Catalonia and Italy. Let us recall that the Celtic Guern Vern also refers to the marsh, the, ma the mast of a boat, and as well as the rudder. It was also the case uh, in um, last uh, Cornish uh, occurrences. So it will also be necessary to reconcile these data with a French place name derivating from Guern and Verne, which gave the numerous Verneuil, Verneuil, Vernou, from the uh, Gaulish Werneuil-Yalon, Alder Clearing, and also Vernay, 
all the Ver of course the famous uh, Jules Verne whose patronymic name is of toponymic origin uh, the names for slow the, configura this, the configuration of this map calls back the previous one Breton uh, Irin, the cognate of Welsh Irin and Gallic Arnia. Distribution of the cognate uh, Romance variants extend again over much of the Garo Romance area, Aragon and Catalonia, and this time including the Basque speaking zone. The names for Sedge. The sedge is the cutting grass char characteristic of peatlands or acid lands, and the distribution of the name of the sedge offer lexical maps map that seems to testify a very old implantation. This plant was used in 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 braiding techniques for a long time before the first human settlements. The extension of the variant is roughly identical to that of the maps already studied. In Italy, uh, Esca form is still used along the Po and the Adish river, rivers, and the Sisca area extend then to the south of Spain. The names for sieve riddle, the Celtic names, names for this of the sieve in ancient Gaul extend mostly towards the northern Galorans area, encompassing Normandy devoid of occurrences of that type. In um, it should be noted that R Roman's forms do not mean properly sieve, but rather uh, sieve residue resulting from the sieving. Names for to hide, to hide, hiding place. Uh, the Roman's form uh, as we could find in French dialects, Mushi Muse, or in North Italy, Muccia mean to hide. And Tonizen demonstrated that all these romance verb can be of Celtic origin. <coughs> and relies for these on the variants, variants Irish Mook, uh, Welsh Mook, and Breton Mook, smoke, suffocation, trouble, uh, cover hiding place and the corresponding verbs uh, Irish Mugh, Welsh Mogadi, Breton Muga to suffocate, to cover, to hide. This analysis tries to show several examples of maps demonstrating remarkable geolinguistical concordances in the Celto Atlantic area. In order to move beyond the dead end in which classical philology and Indo European theory leaders, it is important now to study a uh, linguistic area by considering the exchanges it may have had over the long term with their neighboring linguistic territories. By taking into account the last results rich in the fields of archaeology, prehistory, and ethnology, this kind of research. Uh, presents all the opportunities to be innovative and to uh, help us understand better the continuity of languages and populations in the Atlantic zone. And thank you for your attention. Yeah.